G'day everyone, I'm Coop, and today we're going to be looking at the Memorabot polypropylene build surface for 3D printers. The particular Memorabot plate I purchased, link below in description, was marketed for a TiVo 3D printer. Specifically, being 3mm thick, this plate's dimensions are 310mm by 370 So at this size, this includes at least the TiVo Tornado, I believe some of the Creality CR series, and generally any printer that supports a 300 by 300 build volume. Memorabot do offer a fairly wide range of plates though, so it's worth having a look even if you don't happen to have this particular size. The Memorabot plate is advertised as being a replacement for other traditional build surfaces. It claims to be durable, long-lasting and consistent, with good adhesion and release properties. The reviews for the product were fairly positive and they did support this, though there were a few minor complaints regarding damage and shipping. This will become relevant a bit more later. For now though, I'm going to quickly give you some history around my tornado, why I decided to purchase the Memorabot plate, and while doing so, we'll have a look at how it stacks up against its counterparts, particularly how it goes against glass. This is my Tornado. I think it's a great little machine, even if it is a bit temperamental. For anyone not familiar with the Tornadoes, the printer has a powerful heat bed with a beautiful, in my case, black glass build plate on the heat bed itself. Uh, this wonderful little plate, so pleasing to the eye, is hidden by default, however, underneath a build tack style surface that comes provided with the printer stuck to the plate with a strong adhesive. I've heard it referenced as TiVoTac. I don't know if that's a real name or just a joke, but I like it, so we're gonna keep calling it that. Now, the TiVoTac surface wasn't terrible. It had pretty good adhesion properties, uh, even too good, you might say. Most prints, even those with high detail base layers, stuck really well, and they printed without issue. Uh, it was an almost plug and print situation with the Tornado. Uh, I did have to level the bed, but once it was set up, prints pretty much just worked straight away, and they continued to succeed for a while. After some time though, things started to change. Uh, I print with the bed fairly hot and this constant heat caused air bubbles to start to form under the surface of the TiVoTac uh, and these became significant enough to cause a, a pretty big difference when printing the base layer. Uh, so it made my leveling an absolute nightmare. My prints had to be moved around the bed constantly to try and ensure success uh, and it even led to me replacing my extruder with a, with a proper E3D Titan uh, as the leveling issues actually broke the last one through excessive grinding and blockages. So obviously this wasn't particularly good, uh, it was causing my prints to pretty much fail constantly, I needed to make a change. I did some research, uh, found out it was a bit of a common problem with the TiVoTac surfaces, and I got some good recommendations for alternatives. So I initially ordered the Memorabot first, uh, but I'm an impatient sort of guy, and it, ha it having to come from China to Australia, I also decided to go ahead and pay a local company to custom cut me a piece of glass to use as a build plate in the meantime. With the glass plate now available as an option and the Memorabot on the way, the next step was to remove the TiVoTac surface from the Tornado. Uh, this was not fun. It took several hours and half a bottle of a goo remover cleaning solution to firstly peel the TiVoTac surface off the heat bed and then remove all the wonderful adhesive goo that it left behind. Anyway, after removing the original surface, I was finally ready to install the glass bed. Now the glass I had cut was the same size as the Memorobot, so 310x370, excepting that at 4mm it was 1mm thicker. Uh, as I use a strain relief support bracket on my printer, which was previously sized for a 1mm thick surface, this had to be modified and reprinted. Not a big deal, otherwise I just secured the glass bed with some strong electrician's tape. Thank you. 
So after installing the glass, I discovered two things. One, the base layer on successful finished prints was amazing. It was like glass, glossy, reflective, and just perfectly smooth. The glass was amazing to print on. It held its heat pretty well, uh, likely because the tornado is good at this already, but finished prints were just gorgeous. The other side though, discovery number two, adhesion on glass is kind of crap. Even with a well-leveled bed, anything other than lines and corners, just forget about it. The trade-off is pretty immense with glass. You get these great looking prints, but the amount of work you have to do and the amount of filament that gets wasted, it makes it kind of difficult to see it as beneficial. It gets a little better over time, like you do figure out ways around it, such as different things to apply to the glass to improve adhesion, uh, tape, glue sticks, or painting on cloth painting on craft glue mixed with water, um, all of this I tried at one point or another, or, or you could adjust your models and your slicing, you know, adding some rafts or different orientations, etc. Ultimately though, it's always a bit of a battle with the glass. Given the extra weight of my bed too, due to the additional thickness, etc., I found that my bed often needed to be re-leveled, sometimes as often as every print, so that was getting a little bit annoying. Now, all that said, I don't think glass is bad. I think it's quite good. I, I really love the prints I was getting with it when it worked, and I'm not saying you should never use it. I'm just saying that if you're new to 3D printing or the specifics or quirks of your machine, uh, maybe just stay away from it for a while and, and get used to things, know what you want and that kind of thing, uh, then maybe make that decision. Me, I'm glad I gave it a go. I'm glad I have the glass bed still and I can go back to it if I want to, uh, but ultimately I'm, I'm also glad that while all of this was going on with the glass bed, the Memorabot surface arrived and I made the decision to give it a go too. So this is where we finally get into the Memorabot plate itself. The first thing I'm going to cover is probably my only real gripe, my only problem, and that is that the corners of the plate, and only the corners, everything else is fine, uh, all sustain some sort of minor damage uh, during shipping. So none of it actually impacts the functionality of the plate, and I know it was due to shipping and it did have a long way to travel, so, you know, I get it. I understand this isn't a fault of the product or the company directly. Uh, however, the plate was kind of only packaged in like a little bit of foam and wrapped in plastic, and that was about it. Uh, the plate was fine otherwise, so really it's not a big deal, but as I mentioned previously, a good handful of the reviews on the site also mentioned a bit of damage during shipping, uh, which kind of makes me wonder if perhaps the product should really be better packaged uh, to try and avoid this kind of thing. Perhaps if also placed in a box or rather than just being padded and wrapped or if it had a bit of additional protection to the corners themselves, damage due to shipping might be reduced or even eliminated. Otherwise though, how did the plate go during printing? So as you can see on the screen currently, once the beds leveled, the prints were sticking to it beautifully. Here we can see a decent level of detail being achieved pretty easy. Uh, this footage is actually from my first attempt, so other than speeding it up I haven't done any editing, there were no additional takes, I literally just hit go on print uh, and started recording it. So I'm actually pretty impressed by that, uh, so the adhesion to the bed is obviously pretty good, and the heat dispersion throughout the plate itself is also quite good. While I only measured it by touch, the heating feels fairly consistent from the centre to fairly close to the edges. So the glass wasn't as good at this, it tended to have really good heating in the centre, uh, but it was not so great the further out you went. So installation of the, the surface was uh, really easy too, so it fit my heat bed perfectly and I just installed it the same way I did the glass bed, using some tape to secure it uh, either end and just prevent it from wobbling or shaking around during printing. Uh, I could use some clips or I could print some supports and secure it, I just like the low profile and the simple nature of the tape, I think that works well for me. So cleaning the surface is also pretty easy, a uh, small spray with some isopropyl alcohol or water uh, and a bit of a wipe down with a clean cloth seem to clean off any marks on the plate. Uh, the instructions that came with it state that any wear or tear on the plate itself can actually be fixed with a bit of a, a go over with some fine sandpaper. So I can't really comment at this point on the lifetime of the plate, uh, but I reckon these things should go a long way towards reducing maintenance and increasing the lifespan of the surface itself. So this is going to be something I'll miss about the glass I reckon, uh, it was, even when I took it off, it was still as perfect when I did as, as when it was first installed. It didn't take any damage at all the whole time I was using it. So print quality wise, the base layer is fine, has a nice solid matte finish uh, on it. 
Uh, unlike the glass, it's fairly unremarkable. It's about as expected for the surface, so no complaints. Just nothing really to write home about either in that regard. So what about the Memorobot's release properties? Well, here's how I found that. Okay, so the plate is advertised as having an easy release once the build plate reaches room temperature. Uh, if we have a bit of a look, hopefully it's going to actually show this. So room temperature is, what, 24, 25 for me Celsius. Uh, the build plate's currently sitting around 30. Hey, come on camera, you can do it. Focus. There we go. Build plate's sitting around 30. Uh, a couple of the pieces are a little bit loose on this print, so I thought I'd give it a bit of a go. Um, just see if we can get it to release fairly easily. Oh, look at that. Easy. Uh, bit of stringing there. Nothing I can't fix up. But that was, yeah, really easy to get off the plate. Uh, a lot easier than the original TiVo uh, surface used to be, that's for sure. I used to have to pry at prints uh, with the scraper, even at room temperature. Yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with that. It's it's probably about as easy as the glass. The glass used to release pretty easy as well, uh, probably at higher temperatures, but you know, that's sort of a minimal trade-off, nothing massive. You know, if you take the prints off too early, they tend to bend a little bit anyway, so it's probably not the best idea to be doing that. So yeah, I really like that. I thought that worked out well. And so there you have it. TLDR, I recommend the Memorobot. I think it's a good replacement for a glass bed depending on what you're looking for, and I also think it's good value for money. I'm getting pretty good results from it so far, and if adhesion to the plate is a bit of an issue for you, uh, if you feel like you want to change or you want something to replace the stock standard or whatever you have at the moment, I think the Memorobot is a good choice. I give it 4 out of 5 stress-free happy coops that are no longer having to monitor and worry about their prints every time they hit that start button. So how about you? Have you had any issues with your build surfaces? What experiences have you had or alternatives have you tried? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe for more. I'll see you next time.